Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie, and I'm coming at you with another lesson in the System D series. And today, I'd like to take a look at how to set host name information on a System D system. So, what I have here is an actual real live production machine. I'm logged into it remotely, and it needs to have the host name changed. And you can see there, just by all that, okay, this is, that's my current host name, right? So you can tell it's kind of messed up. And the reason it got that way is because when I did the operating system installation on this machine, I knew that I needed to set it to a specific host name, but I needed to look on another machine that wasn't booted up at the time in order to see, you know, uh, what I needed to set it to, and uh, just so there wouldn't be conflicts. And so uh, I didn't boot up at the time, so just accepted the default host name that the operating system installer gave me. And of course, you can see it's kind of messed up there, all right? Uh, but anyway, so I need to change it. And uh, this uh, particular machine here is running Lubuntu 16.04. And uh, yeah, it's kind of old, but it's the long-term support version, which is what I needed on this machine. But anyway, uh, we have that, and then I also have a virtual machine, which is running CentOS 7. We'll get to that here in just a moment. But anyway, uh, you probably remember from the pre-System D days about how you could just do the host name command like that, and it would give you the host name. And then if you had pseudo privileges, you could change the host name to whatever you want. But that would only be temporary. So as soon as you reboot the machine like this, that new host name, that Donnie machine host name that I'm specifying there would go away. And in order to make it permanent, you would have to go into the Etsy directory and hand edit the host name file. But we're not going to do that anymore because now we have host name CTL. And so you see there, that gives us a lot more information than just the host name. And it, it turns out we have a few different types of host names here. We have the static host name which is just the traditional host name. And then we have the icon name, and there's supposed to be a pretty host name there as well, but it's, it's not here. And I think there's another command we have to uh, use in order to get that. But anyway, that's okay. Uh, the icon name, pretty host name, uh, those are supposed to be used on graphical utility. So, uh, uh, there's some sort of graphic utility, and just as full disclosure, I've never figured out what they are. I haven't seen them yet. But there's supposed to be some graphical utilities where your pretty host name and your icon name will show up you know, to uh, designate that computer, right? If, if you've got a whole big network. So, as I say, I don't know what they are yet. Uh, but anyway, we're not going to deal with them right now. Anyway, uh, what we're going to look at here is the static host name. And we're also going to look at the chassis type, because those are going to be the two things that we can really, really use. And so uh, the chassis type, if you look at the man page for hostname CTL, and by the way, you see there, uh, the chassis type here is desktop, because this is a desktop computer. And if we look at the man page for hostname CTL, we can go down and we can see the different things here that we can set for chassis type. So we see that our chassis types are defined as either desktop, laptop, server, tablet, handset, watch, or embedded. And then we have a couple special types. For virtualization, we have VM and container. Now, uh, and we do have the option switch there that we can set the chassis type if you need to, but there's a good chance you might not even need to because on this particular machine here, I did not set that. 
it chose the chassis type automatically when I did the operating system installation. So if you were to install this on a server, well, you know, uh, maybe you might have to change that to server. I don't know. Or if you, or it might detect that too. I really don't know. I haven't really tried that yet. But anyway, we have that, that uh, option switch there to change it if we need to. Now over here, this is my CentOS 7 virtual machine. And we can see here that we have the chassis type is VM. And again, I did not set that. I did not set that manually because the operating system installer chose that for me when I installed the operating system into this uh, VirtualBox virtual machine. And also it automatically chose the icon name of computer-vm. So yeah, it says the, uh, uh, yeah, virtual machine computer. But anyway, let's go back over here. And as I said, this is the machine which I need to change anyway. And uh, the desktop, it's okay, I'm leaving it. Icon name, computer-desktop, I'm gonna leave that. But anyway, let's look at the man page again to see what the uh, command we need to use. And actually, you know what? Since the pretty host name does not show up in that default command, that hostname CTL command, let's look at that. Let's just do specify dash dash pretty here. And we'll look at that. Okay, well, I don't have a pretty host name set. Okay, that's why it's not showing up. So anyway, let's go back down here. And we'll look at the set host name. And so we're going to use sudo hostname ctl set dash hostname followed by the hostname that I want to assign to it. And by default, this is going to alter the pretty, the static, the transits, host names, all alike. But if I wanted to just alter one of them, I could do that as well. Well, I don't want to alter one. I'm just going to alter all of them. Okay, that is that is fine. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Hostname CTL. Set dash hostname. And we're going to name this Lubuntu. 1A. Now, there's a specific reason that I am naming it that. The reason doesn't matter. Just accept the fact that that's the name I want to give it. And if I wanted to, I could also specify a domain name, such like uh, xyzwidgets.com or something like that. But I don't need to. This is just my own little home network. So I'm just going to name it Lubuntu 1A without the domain name. Okay, and so there we have it. There's my static host name of Lubuntu 1A. The icon name is still computer-desktop. That did not get altered. And we could look at the pretty one. That should have gotten altered. Okay, well, no, it didn't. So that man page has lied to me. It's not... Uh, <laughs> Uh, either that or I have to reboot the machine. And actually, you can see there, too, that the command line is still showing with the old host name. So once I reboot the machine, then I will have this new host name going, and uh, I should be good. Okay? Uh, something else here I want to point out, too, this chassis name. Okay? So as I said, here, we got desktop. We could also specify server or laptop or whatever else, right? I already showed you all that. Now, I could totally, totally see, and I've never done this, but I am just guessing, I'm just uh, surmising that you could use this chassis information in 
deployment scripts of some sort. And for example, let's say that you're deploying something via Puppet or Ansible or Salt, something like that, right? And let's say that you want only the desktop machines on the system to, to be affected. I could totally see putting a command in that script, like uh, host names, CTL, and uh, dash dash chassis or something like that, right? In order to get the that chassis type for all the machines and then saying, okay, if chassis type is desktop, deploy this script. If the chassis type is not desktop, do not deploy this script, okay? So yeah, I could totally see that. I could totally see where that would be useful. And, you know, of course, uh, same thing for like servers. Uh, if you have a, a, a script that you want to deploy to all the servers, then say, okay, if chassis type equals server and uh, just deploy this uh, or whatever else. So yeah, I could, I could totally see that. But anyway, that's uh, really all there is to it. And uh, of course, this is typical system D stuff, which means that the command is universal. So it doesn't matter whether you're on Ubuntu, Arch, Debian, CentOS, Red Hat, whatever. Anything that's using systemd is going to be using this same set of commands. So anyway, that's all I got for now. And if you like what you see here, be sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.